step into the day with the dawn ringing in my ears Oh well, I turn to my TV show No better way, I gotta get myself into gear Let's go, oh, and I feel good Ah, here we go. Can you feel it? Good morning, you beautiful people. Welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express to watch on SABC3 on your Friday. Yay! Yay. Here we go. Come on. Can you believe it, baby. man? End of the week, opening ceremony is done. First game is done. Bobby Williams, you champion. Wow. Like, I don't yes. know if our relationships are going to survive the World Cup. Um, it's a, a month of World Cup madness, but it's going to be awesome. Russia kicking off in style, oh, dude, man. 5-0, man. Oh, man. Mm. What? So, Anyone? First of all, oh, yes. and there we go. Boom. We won't start the morning Boom. well Come on, on a high five. <laughs> um, so, of course, lest we forget, it is Father's Day over the weekend, and we have got probably the most famous dad in South Africa at the moment, yeah, judging by much. Instagram. Um, he Next is I, a course. phenomenal cricket player, but an even better dad. Wayne Parnell is in the house. There How he is, is looking more stylish. He's Love glowing. It. Just started pre season training again. I wonder how the other <laughs> sleep training <laughs> balance is going to be maintained, but so good to have him here. We're going to talk Father's Day with this awesome young man. And mm. speaking of Father's Day, if you don't have have a gifting idea for dad yet? Don't worry, we've got you sorted here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Nick's gonna, well, show us Run some tickets. Uh, yeah. Ooh, some more uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Listen, um, then it's also, we're gearing up for the Presidential Awards 2018. The nominations are out there, we're calling all those. But we are def definitely keeping Madiba's legacy alive through all those iconic shirts I love that it, he yeah. is known for as well. Very, very coveted uh, awards as well. And then, of course, we're gonna spend some time in the kitchen. This is perfect for dad, a double stacked burger. Bam, bam, like, I just, bam. I can't. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely amazing, guys. Thank you for tuning in and spending your Friday morning with us. It's going to be a great one, man. I can't wait for what lies ahead for now, though. Let's say good morning to the gorgeous Leanne Williams. Oh, and good morning to the gorgeous team. You guys look amazing. And good morning to you at home. Let's see what's happening in the national news. After a day of protests and load shedding across parts of the country, ESCOM has obtained an urgent court interdict, barring three major unions from striking. The Labour Court granted the power utility the interdict yesterday, declaring that any industrial action, picket or gathering undertaken after June the 11th is unprotected and unlawful. The majority of workers fall under the category of essential services and are barred from striking. Meanwhile, ESCOM has said that it would continue monitoring the situation to establish if South Africans need to brace themselves for another series of, bad, of load shedding today. The Muslim community in Malmesbury is reeling from shock following a deadly attack at a mosque in the Swartland town early yesterday. Two worshippers were stabbed to death and the attackers were shot and killed by police. The motive for the attack has not yet been established. It came on the eve of Eid al-Fitr, which marks the end of Ramadan. The perpetrator refused to surrender and attacked the police. The victims were 72-year-old Ismail Basa and 45-year-old Siyad Hassan Hedeh. On the international front, few people in Ghana would recognize Anas Arameo Anas on the street, but almost everyone knows his name and his burgeoning reputation as the country's anti-corruption hero. The journalist keeps his identity a closely guarded secret and when on camera wears a trademark hooded tunic, his face covered by, covered by a veil of red and white beads. His latest undercover documentary was released last Wednesday and with the start of the World Cup has detonated like a bomb. In it, he and his team of reporters has caught dozens of football referees and officials accepting bribes. And then finally, EU countries yesterday approved a raft of retaliatory tariffs, including on whiskey and motorcycles, against painful duties imposed by US President Donald Trump on European metals, uh, officials said. Now, the 28-member bloc agreed to activate the countermeasures after Trump on June the 1st followed through on his threat to impose tariffs on European steel and aluminium exports. From blue jeans to motorbikes and whiskey, the EU's hit list of products targeted the tariffs with the US and of course reads like a catalogue of emblematic American exports. Well, that was your six o'clock news update. Let's get a look at what's happening in the world of traffic and weather.
Thank you so much, Leanne. Well, at this stage, the roads are still free flowing, nothing serious to report on, but we will keep you updated throughout the course of the morning. But for now, let's get into your weather and your temperatures. And it looks like most parts of the country can expect a rather chilly start to your morning, reaching mild maximums for certain areas a little bit later on. And also strong winds and also some showers expected for the southern region today. Uh, Polokwane on a nine minimum, reaching a high of 25 degrees. Mombela 12 and a high of 30. Pretoria 522. Johannesburg 4 minimum, reaching a warmer 20. 21, My King 324, Klagstorp 222, Kimberley 0 this morning with a maximum 15, Bloemfontein nice and cold, minus 2 and your maximum 16, Richards Bay 16 and a maximum 27, Peter Maritzburg 8 minimum reaching a high of 26, Durban 1725, Ntata 723, East London 13 and your maximum 23 degrees as well, uh, Craddock 3 and a high of 18, Port Elizabeth 1121, George 10 and 19, Southern Sutherland 1 and a high of 6, very cold in Sutherland today, also some scattered showers expected. Cape Town can expect more rain, 11 minimum with a maximum 16 degrees, Worcester 8 and a maximum 12, Springbok 3, 12 and Uppington 3 minimum with a, with a maximum of 17 degrees a little bit later on today. And that's a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for the 6 o'clock bulletin. We'll keep you updated. I'm back in half an hour's time just after 6.30. I'll update you again. Well, today feels quite historic, so let's find out what makes today historic in this fast-paced world that is changing and getting faster by the second. We slam on the brakes to find out what makes the 15th of June, a day before Youth Day, momentous, and we look back throughout history. Exactly. In 2012, uh, American acrobat Nick Wallander became the first person to successfully walk directly oh, yeah. over Niagara Falls. On a tightrope. Oh, why? That. Look at that. Listen, I can't deal with these things now. Can you imagine that noise, the energy around them? Incredible. Well so now let's go a little further back in time to 1965, where on this day, Bob Dylan recorded the classic hit, Like a Rolling Stone. Iconic. It is now listed by Rolling Stone magazine as the greatest song of all time, believe it or not, coming in at number one on the 500 greatest songs of all time list. Exactly. And then on this day, Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. 1994, <laughs> Walt Disney Studios launched a limited release screening of their first original animated feature film, The Lion King, and made $1.5 million on the opening weekend with films on promotion. And of course, uh, until then, being a trailer which showed the opening sequence of the film. But it's still huge today. I mean, it was on TV the other day and I cried like Pumba. it was the first time I'd seen it. Pumba, not in front of the kids. You know, not come on, Mufasa. Uh, when Mufasa. I mean, if there died, is a dad well. out there who hasn't done that, ah, I'm not out there, baby. <laughs> okay, come on. You're going to do it on Father's Day. We love you guys. Um, go out there and seize the day. You go and make today one for the history books. Oh, man. Oh, gee, we just knew you were going to do that. Exactly. He did that with Baby Jack a couple of times as well. <laughs> yes. Well, um, we are taking a very quick break on your Feel Good Breakfast show. And leading up to Youth Day this, well, in fact, tomorrow, um, yeah. the University of Pretoria's Vet School, they hosted their 2018 I Want Be a Vet Day. And it's the perfect time to encourage the kids of tomorrow today. Oh, that's brilliant, man. So many events happening yeah. around the country with regards to Youth Day. And they're also gearing up for Father's Day on Sunday. It's his very first one. Cricketer Wayne Parnell, he joins us here looking all kinds of Stylish. Looks like he's taking it in his stride, man. But uh, we're going to sit down and chat with him and see how he is feeling ahead of that very big, momentous day, indeed. We'll see you after the break.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. Time for us to take a look at what's happening on the socials. Now, of course, we know this weekend we're celebrating not only Father's Day, but Youth Day as well. And we want to know from you as we celebrate South Africa's youth, give a shout out to those inspiring youth in your community and share what gets you excited about being a young South African. Carmen Volfart kicks it off, who says, food of different nations, the flags of different countries compared to ours and the beliefs. Uh, Ramachone says, what makes me proud to be South African is the ability to express my my views and share positive thoughts. Adelaide says, uh, my shout out goes to the youth who think for their future and make a difference for their lives. Uh, Kaiser says, good morning, happy Friday. I'd like to send a shout out to Tabang from my church. He is doing a wonderful job for our community. Thank you, Tabang. Thank you for doing the most. And then Kia says, I am youth because of the late 76 youth. Thus, I would like to give them a shout out. Thank you so much. Keep that coming. Who would, who would you like to give a shout out to? Somebody who's doing something really inspiring in your community. I love that. I love the fact that today's youngsters are cognizant of what young people Absolutely. have done throughout our country's history Absolutely. as well. So awesome messages coming there. So obviously it is a massive weekend, very special, because in addition to Youth Day tomorrow, we are also gearing up for Father's Day, Day on Sunday. You can see how excited we are. <laughs> oh, no. It's going to be the first one for many new fathers out there, and this includes South African fast bowler, all-rounder, and just a great guy, cricketer Wayne Parnell, who alongside with his gorgeous wife, leading style blogger Aisha Baker, have recently welcomed their bouncing baby boy Khalid into the world, and he joins us this morning um, to feel like he's getting the morning <laughs> off from a full-time gig. Dude, Wayne, can I just welcome, say, my brother. Welcome to the dad club, man. Thank you, Dude, I, I, we've shaken hands about three times no, this yeah. morning, man. I, I feel you, man. I feel you. How are you doing, bro? Yeah, good. Um, it's obviously something really special. It's um, been a very exciting time in our, in our lives, and he's actually one month today. Yeah. Yay, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. So it's, it's just been something very, very special. Dude, you look good. You don't look tired, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's hey, the makeup. This is, right this is my normal time to actually wake <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Now, right? I, I've got to ask you, though. I mean, in terms of the preparation before becoming a dad, I mean, you're a national cricketer. You're used to intense work, pressure, preparation. Could you at all prepare for this new journey that you were embarking on a month ago? Absolutely not. But um, <laughs> I was actually having this discussion with a friend of mine. And, um, you know, if you if you have awkward jobs where you have to wake up at awkward times and, you know, things like that, um, it, it equips you a little bit better. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. I think you're, just, you're used to ma making those changes and being adaptable. What's been the biggest surprise? Have you had those moments where you're like, wow, I can't believe this is playing out? Well... I thought like a newborn just basically eats, poops, and sleeps. <laughs> um, but this little guy, he has a life of his, of his own. And yeah. it, it just seems that like during the day, he, he does the sleeping part. And at night, he just wants to be awake. Why? Is that, that's also the thing, man. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, like, some, it's, like, it's like, can't you sleep during the night? <laughs> it, would, it would be far too easy. Way, the day. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, how's the little man doing? Is he, is, yeah. he, is he well? Is he healthy? Yes, yeah, very healthy. Um, beautiful little boy. He's got lots of hair. <laughs> um, that was the first I was like, what well, might go, a lot don't, of it. Don't I know, get too, yeah. too, too um, My father-in-law actually said the same thing. He was like, when, when he was born, he had like this massive bit yeah. of hair. And by the time he was 19 or 20, he actually started going bald. So I'm actually worried for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be mad. But to get a little bit deep, I know that you, yeah. you guys have got a beautiful relationship with Aisha as well. And from your point, I mean, how important is it for you to be there for, for not only uh, Aisha, but for your little boy as well, from a father point, from a father perspective? I think, yeah, obviously, like when, when we got married, I was like, right, we're going to have kids. Yeah. Um, but Aisha actually spoke me out of it. And her reasoning was that we should work on our marriage first. We should be married first. Um, we should build that um, to some sort of level and then think about kids. And I think it's actually very important because once the baby comes, you're so busy with that particular human being yeah. that you can neglect you the other party. Other, yeah. I mean, the wife can neglect the, the husband yeah. and you know, vice versa. So yeah. it is important to still maintain that relationship and you know, try every day to find two minutes here and there just to remind each other about that. Absolutely. I think it, it does help that you get to see the best in each other as well. I mean, marveling at a new mom is something mm. just amazing. And it looks like she's absolutely smashing that. We've got another young man in the midst here. Kat is obviously literally <laughs> yeah, <yeah>. countdown <laughs> has begun. As someone who's in the thick of it right now, any advice for him? I think Kat will be fine. Um, Kat looks like <laughs> someone that's, that's also very hands-on. Yeah. I think for, for me, that's really helped me because I really love kids. Um, so being hands-on and, you know, changing diapers at mm. 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, 
is something that I actually really enjoy and I, I never thought I would. Yeah. Um, cause I've got a lot of nieces and, and nephews and I think over the last 10 years, I haven't changed one diaper and over the last four weeks or month, I've changed probably about 50. <laughs> I, I never even held a baby before my <laughs> own. That's, that's crazy because you want to, but I need to ask you this, maybe this, I mean, he's only a month old now. Um, how has Khalid's arrival changed you or maybe changed your outlook on, on your own life? And, and what are some of those things that you are really looking forward to in terms of, you know, being a father? I think firstly, I've, I've learned that I've got immense patience. Um, I, I really didn't think that I could handle so much. Um, so with me learning about him, I've actually learned a lot about myself as well. Um, and I'm obviously really excited to see him go through all of these phases now. And I'm a little bit sad at the same time because cricket season's coming up soon mm. and I'm going to have to go away and stuff and I'm going to miss a lot of, of that. And I've spoken to dads who also play yeah. cricket, obviously, and you know, that's one thing that they really dread is when they have to go away for maybe a month or two months and they come back and their kid has, you know, com completely changed. Yeah, sure. Just need a, you just quickly. need to convert a baby carrier <laughs> yeah. that can just free up that one arm, oh, man. Really um, it, it's been so awesome connecting with you again, dude, and congratulations. Yeah. Um, you were already loved, now we love you even more, oh, dude. You, you, you absolutely um, really are nailing fatherhood. So enjoy Father's Day. You're first on first Sunday, one, my yeah. man. Cool, thanks a lot. Well, certainly a big weekend ahead. And in the spirit of Youth Day's ethos to inspire, encourage and educate kids, as well as Hill's Pet Nutrition's notion of transforming lives, the University of Pretoria's Vet School hosted their 2018 I Want to Be a Vet Day. It's an event, uh, it's a, a event that serves to teach aspiring vets about what it's like to be a veterinarian is all about. And with an eagerness to learn and passion for fueling their day, we may be looking at our next generation of animal experts in South Africa and beyond. Yeah, I want to be a vet weekend was an initiative started by our students. The OPVSC, which is our house committee on campus, realized the need to expose students from underprivileged areas to our profession. So what we try and do is reach out to students from all over South Africa. From rural communities. And the intention of that is to get students that will go back to their community where they came from to have an impact where mostly at the moment we don't have veterinary services. Where I grew up is an area where people are not aware, they, they lack knowledge about how to take real care of these animals. The people at Ganana, they don't believe that you should take your pet to the doctor. If you ask everybody, especially where I come from, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a policeman. I want to do teaching, like stop thinking inside the box and just explore. I want to be the first one coming out of Ghana, becoming the first vet, opening a clinic. They spend the weekend with us. They do quite a lot of practical activities, so they get exposed to different species of animals. And I got in there and I, touched, I actually touched the teeth, I actually felt the tongue. It's actually weird, but then it was amazing. Body conditioning, the cattle, finding out their age, finding out their grading, that has been very interesting for me. I like the beagles a lot, because I have a lot of hunters, so that was my lot of interesting. I have a lot of good things to learn, and I can do it, and people can bring it out. To be really, really honest, I didn't really expect it to be this amazing. I can't tell you how many, how satisfying it is to just hear that people want to be in this profession to make a difference. They see a need for it in their communities or they, they want to make a change somewhere, they want to create waves somewhere. It means so much to see that. It's a, an exciting weekend for, for prospective students um, to kind of feel their dream of being a veterinary student. Science is at the heart of biology-based nutrition. The secret to lifelong health, it all starts with science. Well, it's Friday, so you know what time it is. It's time for us to play our Expresso Rewind game. Did you tune in every day on Expresso Show this week? Have you been listening and paying attention? Well, it's time to play Expresso Rewind, in which we'll see how much you can remember from this week's show. Of course, we've got our three contenders, you and Stratum, Zoe Brown, Graham Richards. Zoe, you've got the floating trophy. Unfortunately, you're going to have to put it down, my darling, as we begin this go, go. week's competition. Are you ready? Yes. You and what's your sound? Bing. Okay. Me. Wonderful. Oh, oh, I think it's 
here for myself. <laughs> We're here for it. All right, let's All right. Are you ready at home? Yeah. Here yes. we go. Okay. I don't feel ready. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay. okay go, go, go. What don't is lock. Reiki and KO's new single called? Ooh. Graham. Yeah. It's going to make them lots of money. One point going to Graham Richards, well everybody. Done, okay, question well number done, two, eyes ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. When baking, should you should your oven tray be positioned at the top, bottom, or middle? Me. In the middle. Uh, in the in middle. The middle. Oh, obvious, man. Oh, obvious. Oh, thank you. Obvious. Richard won. You and Stratum won. Zoe Brown, you can still come in. You still have a chance. Remember she took it in the home straight last week. So just... What is author Johnson I's new book called? Oh, Graham Richards. Me. Almost lost my voice there. Magnetize. With two eyes. Oh, Graham Richards, two. You and Stratum, one. Zoe Brown, you can start playing at any time. Last question. Which South African surfer is hosting the Cape Town oh. Surf Pro this weekend? Me. Oh. Zoe Brown, oh. Oh. Smith. Mm. It's Johnny Smith. Come on. I think Graham Richards takes it for what? this. Do I get Do I get it? Well done, Graham Richards. Oh. Well done. Okay, oh. that is absolutely fantastic. We uh, are going to definitely be giving you a viewer question at home. <laughs> Here you go. How many popcorns did Hereditary scroll in J.P. Sebastian's movie review. You can share that answer with us on social media. If you're not sure what it is, visit our YouTube channel to watch videos from the past week and listen out for the answer. But let's give Graham Richards one more round of applause. Well, you thank you, thank you. you, you see what your stealing monkey. my sound does. You you see on, I, had a feeling, sound I had a feeling that was, was going to get Dude, me across the line. Fine, fine. Monkey, I love you guys you, can be best friends now. I don't care. Listen, we're going to take a quick break when we come back. We quickly take another look at that epic World Cup opener game uh, last night between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Man, it was I intense. No, man. Uh, then this kind of feels like a World Sevens series uh, <laughs> trophy, but it's not. So, so we've got some actual <laughs> World Series winners in the house right now. Branko Dupriya are here. The Blitzbok are all the world champions and they're here to chat to us this morning. Can I wait? Wish I could ignore your calls It's hard when you're older Cause breaking up feels like divorce Now I have to restart But I don't know where to begin If it means you could love me for a bit oh, If I'm gonna crash, I just will be amazing If I'm gonna jump, let it be from the game by the state mm, I just wanna feel something I just wanna feel something Is that soprano? My cup runneth over. Break it down. Oh, oh when, when I put my drink to the sky. sky. In the afternoon, pre drinks, pre drink situation. Until we see the moon. Yeah, that I'm 
just gonna add a little game on. <laughs> Do you like that, eh? <laughs> it's been one day and I've already threatened yes, to take the whistle yes. away from me. Ashwak <laughs> Mohammed, welcome to it. So okay. FIFA World Cup Russia yeah. 2018 kicked off and with fireworks. I'm not talking about Robbie Williams. Yeah. Special salute no. to his detractors. I tried to feel <laughs> it, Graham. I tried to feel it. It wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite there. Could have matched 2010, certainly. Uh, in, in well, South look, let, let's put it this way. At least Bafana's record of having the highest <laughs> deficit in an opening <laughs> World Cup game. Um, has yeah. now been eclipsed yes. by a 5-0 win over Saudi yeah. Arabia. Did they even show up yesterday? Yeah. They had the position. Yeah. But Russia already a shoo-in for the golden yeah. boots, just, just nothing up front for Saudi Arabia, you know. They had good pace in the midfield and they could get to the final third, but just can't put the ball into the net. And Russia eventually capitalized second half. Slow start to the game, though. You know, he thought there's not much going on here. And uh, Russia with a 5-0 scoreline, that's a bit inflated. There you go, because I don't think they're that good enough. Wow, hey? <laughs> no, 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 because I don't think they'll get out of their group either. Uh, Egypt and Uruguay, so uh, that's a good sign for Egypt. Yeah. If they can now get through the group, you know, Russia with the pressure of being the, the host nation, but they're not uh, that good as They might not have felt the pressure then, but yeah. they certainly will approaching yeah. the knockout. So, so much coming up this weekend. And you we won't speak Egypt. about Robbie Williams' middle finger. Eh? Um, I'm, no. I've just glossed over it I quite, quite just, dramatically. Yeah. But no, no, power, power to him. He got to perform in front of a World Cup crowd yes. and apparently did it for free. So yeah. well done, Robbie. We <laughs> love you, man. Um, you mentioned Egypt, yeah. the star laid in Egypt's side, the hopes of Africa. Yes, yes, up against Uruguay. Talk about pedigree in a World yeah. Cup, man. And, and the man is fit. Mohamed Salah, he's made it. You know, he's going to run out today. And he's that's no what the whole of Africa uh, wanted. But he's got some support. We've spoken about their goalkeeper, SMA. Uh, Hadri, 45 years old, unbelievable that he's made it there. Also, uh, uh, some veterans in Ahmed Fatih is going to have to support him, and Mohamed Al Neni, we've seen him at Arsenal as well. So they've got to provide that support to Mohamed Salah. Um, and we know that in a World Cup campaign, it's a four year campaign. It's about yeah. continuity, it's about having cool heads, guys who have done it before. Um, talk about cool heads and being thrown out the window. Yeah. The, the Latin passion kicked in <laughs> in the Spanish camp. Hey, I'm telling you. Lepet de Rui. Lepet de Rui. At least we Rui. don't need to worry about this. Yeah, we're not going to have to say his yeah. name again until now back Hedders, on the field. Portugal, Spain, Spain, probably the biggest fixture of yeah. the weekend. Huge match. Do you change your coach two days before a World Cup? You don't, especially if he's going just to another club in your league as well. Real Madrid, Can I just... You know? <laughs> Red card, I think. Red yes. card. Double red card. Cheers. Spanish you know, football. For, for ah. Spain. Just the ego of the president there of the Spanish Football Association saying he wasn't <sighs> informed before the time. Come on, it's professional sport, you know. And the man prepared. They were unbeaten in 20 games under this coach Lopetegui. <sighs> so it's just craziness two days before the game starts. And the, in yesterday's, the, the, there is a, an era of mm. players here that deserve a World Cup yeah. win. They're, it's almost they're, like the final swan song, you know, all yeah. those guys uh, in the uh, so we spoke about. And and if they can just get that midfield going, you know, uh, they've got Diego Costa up front. We know him, quite a robust character, but he can put the ball away. Yeah, yeah, so, so will Ronaldo have enough support? He's got Pepe in defense, a hard guy, you know, been in Champions League for many years, uh, but he needs some support. Juan Moutinho in the midfield, can he supply Ronaldo? That's going to be the key. Is it Ronaldo or is it Portugal? As Portugal. Um, as great as Ronaldo is, he needs that supply to put the ball away. Um, and then talk about pedigree again. Germany, yeah, Germany. up against yeah. Mexico. What a team, wow. Germany. Mesut Ozil, uh, Jam uh, Jerome Boateng. They've got Emmanuel Neuer, uh, the goalkeeper is now fit. Uh, he's got overcome his foot injury. So they've got all the cards to go all the way here. Mexico, we know Chicharito, Javier Hernandez, uh, Rafael Marquez, a veteran at 39, has made it to, to another World Cup. So can they cause an upset? I don't think so. <laughs> um, are Germany your favourites? Yes, they are. Um, a, a lot of people's going with Brazil because of the Neymar factor yeah. you know, and what happened in 2014 when they lost 7 1 to Germany. But uh, Germany just works as a machine, you know. So, Typical German precision. They just know what to do in the big moments. So there are your fixtures. I'm, yeah. I'm going with Belgium, by the way, as a dark horse, just okay. because I want to make some money with yeah. this particular World <laughs> Cup. Um, Egypt, Uruguay, Morocco, Iran, Portugal, Spain, yeah. up to date tomorrow. France against Australia, who had to work so hard to make it into this World yes. Cup. Let's see if they hold firm. Argentina versus Iceland. Boy, hasn't Messi earned his right, <laughs> his opportunity to shine on the world stage. Yeah. Peru versus Denmark, rounding us off. Um, and then Croatia up against another African hope in the Nigeria. Do Nigeria have the chops to make it through to the knockouts at they've least? Got, they've got good enough players. Uh, John Obi Mikael is a captain, a uh, Chelsea guy in the past. So they've got the pedigree. Can they do it on the big stage? And I'm going to give you one of these. 
a well played award. Thank you. So, yeah. um, just check Top this order. man's social media coverage. He yes. is on the money when it comes to World Cup, doing some great, great Thanks work there as well. Man. We're going to get to know each other yeah. really well, man. Is this irritating you yet? No, never. I Unfortunately, don't have a Vuvuzela here. <laughs> <laughs> They've been banned, man. So that's our update on the World Cup. Keep it tuned. Keep it locked in. Why? Because the Blitzbocker are here. Yeah, they are our World 7 Series champions. And we're going to connect with the men in just a moment. In the national news this morning, ESCOM has obtained an urgent court interdict barring three major unions from striking. The majority of workers fall under the category of essential services and are barred from striking. ESCOM said it would continue monitoring the situation to see if South Africans need to brace themselves for another series of load shedding. The Muslim community in Malmesbury is reeling from shock following a deadly attack at a mosque in the Swatland town early yesterday in which two worshippers were stabbed to death and the attacker was shot and killed by police. The motive has not yet been established and it came on the eve of Eid al-Fitr, which marks the end of Ramadan. On the international front, few people in Ghana would recognize journalist Anas Arameo Anas in public, but almost everyone knows of his burgeoning reputation as the country's anti-corruption hero. His latest undercover documentary was released last Wednesday and with the start of the World Cup has detonated like a bomb. As in it, he and his team of reporters caught dozens of football referees and officials accepting bribes. And then finally, EU countries yesterday approved a raft of retaliatory tariffs, including on whiskey and motorcycle, uh, motorcycles, against painful duties imposed by US President Donald Trump on European metals. From blue jeans to motorbikes and whiskey, the EU's hit list of products targeted for tariffs where the US reads like a, uh, a rather catalog of emblematic American exports. Well, that was your 6.30 News update. Let's get a look at what's happening in the world of sport with Graham. Both rugby and football obviously dominating at the moment. In rugby, the Springboks will look to go 2-0 up in their three-match series against England tomorrow as the two sides meet in Bloemfontein. In football, host nation Russia kicked off their 2018 Soccer World Cup campaign yesterday with an emphatic 5-0 win over Saudi Arabia in Moscow. And staying with football, the fixtures list for the 2018-2019 English Premier League was released yesterday and it sees the new season getting underway on the 11th of August. We'll expand on all of those headlines on the top of the hour. Well, let's take a first look at the roads in Gauteng and Haifeld. There's been an accident on the N1 southbound. It's after Samran Avenue and it's blocking that right lane. So please proceed with caution. I'll have another update for you in half an hour. More than a club, more than an appliance brand, Defy. Thank you, Zoe. Let's quickly take another look at your weather and your temperatures. And it looks like most parts of the country can expect a rather chilly start. But um, those places also reaching mild to warm, uh, moderate higher temperatures. There's also very hot temperatures, especially in Mombela today. But for the southeastern region, you can still expect those cold temperatures, strong winds, as well as showers expected. Bolokwane on a nine minimum, reaching a maximum 25 degrees. Mombela 12 and a high of 30. Pretoria 522. Johannesburg starting off on four minimum, your maximum 21. Mai King 324, Klagstorp 2 and a high of 22, Kimberley 0 and a maximum 15, Bloemfontein uh, minus 2 this morning, very cold, staying cool with a maximum 16, Richards Bay 1627, Peter Maritzburg 8 and a high of 26, Durban 1725, Ntata 7 this morning with a maximum 23, East London 1323, Craddock 3 degrees minimum this morning, your maximum 18, Port Elizabeth 11 with a maximum 21, George 10 and 19, Sutherland very cold today, starting off on one reaching a high of only six degrees and some scattered showers expected. Cape Town can also expect more rain, 11 minimum with a maximum 16 and rain expected for Worcester still today, eight minimum with a maximum 12, Springbok three and a high of 12 and Uppington starting off on three minimum as well reaching a cool maximum of 17 degrees. That's a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for the 6.30 Bulletin. I'll bring you another update in half an hour's time just after seven. Uh, thanks, Ian. We're going to take a very quick break. When we return, take a deep breath. I'm trying to calm myself down. We have got the World 7 Series champions in the house, at least two of them. Branco de Priya and Ruan Nell are here from the Black Box. They are world champions. Hello, boys. Amazing, absolutely wonderful having them here. And then another champion, a musical kind, Jimmy Nevis is in the house and we do 
quick fire questions just to get to know him a little bit better. From beef lasagna to creamy macaroni and cheese, Clover the Whistling Chef's high quality conveniently packed with a variety to choose from. Added to that, Africa's first Vaxil technology ensures they're kept fresher for longer for the whole family to enjoy. The Whistling Chef. Heat, whistle, eat, sing. It's as simple as that. Made with love by Clover. Good morning, your, you beautiful creatures. Thank you so much for joining us. It is ahead of the weekend. We've got just what you've been craving for. It is that breakfast team that are so unbelievably good looking that there's a rumor going around that all of their pictures on social media are actually fake. It's DJ Roger Good, Nadia, and the one, the only Mr. Robbie Cruz. What's up? Well, there's, only, there's only three of you in studio and you're still that noisy, man. <laughs> How's it? Did you watch your football last night? Wasn't that cool? Oh, my word. Robbie Williams, you beaut. How oh, good was that? He, he stole the show. Completely. He's my second favorite Robbie now. Oh, Robbie. I love you, Graham. <laughs> I love you. So what you got for us, guys? Uh, <laughs> we got a uh, serving them up fresh from the kitchen. The chef says you want to check out Sketchy Bongo live at Carnival City this uh, weekend in Johannesburg. Uh, yeah, Mr. Belay, better known as Sketchy Bongo, will be performing live in the uh, Brass Bar at Carnival City this Friday. Get your tickets now. You don't want to miss out on a night of killer tunes from one of South Africa's best producers and live acts. Friday, 15th of June from 9 o'clock, 60 bucks gets you in. Yes, sir. Good morning, madam. How are you doing? Cape Town, Mother City. I hear you guys been having some uh, crazy weather down there uh, yesterday and last night. Well, Ikazi Outdoor Cinema Screening of Serafina that is going down. Village One at Kailicha. Amazing pictures you can see on your screen right now. Uh, Ikazi Outdoor Cinema presents a screening of Serafina, the, uh, the incredible film, the world-famous uh, story of Serafina, the perfect youth day film. It deals with 
with the events surrounding the history of Youth Day and the Soweto riots in opposition of the Afrikaans as the language to be used in school. The Kazi Outdoor Cinema is the place to be. It's a mobile cinema that screens films in townships showing inspiring African films for the youngsters in SA. Check it out Saturday. That's going down from 5 o'clock and there's no charge to get in. It's free, all right? So you no excuses to miss that, all right? And finally, Bloemfontein. How you doing? Bloemfontein City, South Africa uh, versus England. What? What oof. exactly? Oof. Exactly. What do you say, Graham? We've got to have score prediction at the very least. What do you say? Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go the distance, this one, but I think we're going to edge them by two points. I, uh, I have a feeling it's going to go down to the wire, man. Mm. Good. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, that's good. Now the Springboks take on England as part of the uh, Castle Logger Incoming Series 2018. So come on down to the Free State Stadium to support the boys on their home turf. That's Saturday, 6th of June from 5 o'clock. What do you say, Big G? Cake oh, down. man, loving it, man. Loving it. And, of course, we're all about Youth Day here as well. And we want you to celebrate Youth Day with a run between the vineyards. That's how you do it in the Cape. Promises a stunning view. The Simonsburg Conservancy, um, some of the longer routes, offer great climbing tracks through the vineyards towards the Klapmutz Corp with uh, rewriting single track trails and scenic wineland views. It really is an um, unbelievable route. So come and enjoy it, not just for the young'uns, it's for the whole family as well. And that's happening on the 16th of June, obviously being Youth Day. It kicks off at 7.30, 100 bucks to 145 bucks will get you in. Um, just like the Vuvuzela, our hoorah has been banned from this year's World Cup. So I'm going to send you on your way. Love you guys. Um, and um, we, of course, are wanting you to go out there and explore your world a little bit more more. No matter what your weekend plans might hold, Caltex is getting you there by giving you the chance to win a Caltex voucher card to the value of 5,000 Rand. What a way to start the weekend. All you have to do is SMS the keyword Caltex, your name and your city, to 33728 and you could be walking away with a 5,000 Rand voucher card. Of course, the VAS rates apply and those terms and conditions that apply can also be found on our website, expressoshow.com. Hoorah! Hoorah! <laughs> No hoo-ha, like, how did that happen? <laughs> I, I thought there's something missing. Come on, Graham, give us. Yeah, give us hoo-ha! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank well, you, Graham. It's time for us to get into our local entertainment news this morning. <laughs> well, you know what? Birthdays are clearly a big deal for our um, Zanzi celebrities. From celebrating their birthdays in Dubai to gifting themselves with really expensive items, actress Amanda DuPont has also jumped on the bandwagon. So taking to Instagram, uh, she shared a snap of her expensive early birthday gift to herself, wow. Amanda, who will be turning 30 on the oh. 26th of June, had us green with envy oh. with her new sports car. So she spoke to Drum Magazine and she says, those close to me know that I've always had a love for cars. The McLaren is one of the oh. cars I've had on my vision board. I'm thrilled and blessed to have been able to purchase it, purchase it in my birthday month. So a big congratulations to Amanda. We wish you oh. all the best. And of that's course, like enjoy a that baby. Standout that's color as well. You know, hey. that's not just a regular color. No, like, that's it's like, oh, look, I've arrived. Very nice. Sure, congratulations. congratulations. Happy and birthday. And early happy birthday, birthday to you. Oh, exactly. this is inspiring. <laughs> From acquiring a set of wheels to acquiring a new wine range from oh. Chenin Blanc to Ponotage, T Boat Touch is becoming the guy to satisfy all South African wine needs. Now the DJ is set to launch a new addition to his wine brand alongside Voldekrans Wine Estate this Youth Day, and it promises to be a treat for all connoisseurs out there. <laughs> After a successful four years in the wine industry, T Boat Touch is set to take it one step further with the launch of his new wine. Touch Reserve in 50-50 partnership with Vildekrans Wine Estate. Now the launch will take place on Youth Day this weekend and Timo Touch and rather holds a special meaning. All of this holds a special meaning. In his Twitter announcement, the 37-year-old wrote, what was once a dream for a sharp full boy is today one of the largest job creators in the wine industry. He also announced that he would be launching a scholarship program which will be funded by the wine. So not only is he making delicious wine, but he's making a difference hmm. too. Touch Reserve. I, I really like the packaging. It's really beautiful. Yeah. I've always, you know, kind of picked the bottle based on its label. So Very nice. Yeah. Well, well done, hey? Our celebrities doing, doing it. The eh? things. Doing, doing the things. Doing the things. Doing the things. You know who else is doing the things? On oh. the rugby field is our world champions, <laughs> rugby seven players. Yes, Graham, we have them in the studio, man. Yeah, man, I, I'm not even going to try and hide my excitement, boys. Welcome to it. Um, two members of the world champion sevens team, the Blitzbox in studio run. 
Uh, Branko, welcome, guys. Um, I, I've been taking these deep breaths and sighs ever since that final, that weekend. No, it, it almost broke me, man. How are you guys feeling now that you've come back? Have you come back down to earth? Two for two, back-to-back -back winners. Uh, this must be just the, the best time of your life, man. Um, yeah, look, it's, uh, it's still pretty unreal. Um, <laughs> I think if you look back at, or if we just go back two weeks ago, yeah. the challenge pretty much looked impossible. Um, you know, so to have come uh, to a cup final in London and then go all the way through it in, uh, in Paris with Fiji losing in the quarters. Um, you know, I, I still remember when that uh, final whistle blew, I was in tears. I was crying like a baby, you know. So, I was crying like yeah, a baby so, with my baby in my, yeah, my hands, man. It was pretty, pretty amazing to be part of it. I'm, I'm so glad, glad we're seeing Vanna there. there. There was such a balance of, of kind of youth and experience. Branko, normally I'd be talking to you as one of the young <laughs> players, but you've done so much in a brief amount of time that you've been there. There is a different dynamic in this team. Obviously, the Commonwealth Games threw things you know, up into the air a little bit. It looked like this was a one-horse race with Fiji. What, what turned around? Was it a moment? How, how, how do you put it all into perspective in your head, man? Um, firstly, um, I don't know. I can't explain it, actually. I can describe uh, the, the way I'm feeling it at this moment. So we played like way back, like two weeks back. But uh, the amount of players that we have in our system uh, it's a great thing for us, uh, especially the the guys is coming through the the academy uh, academy side, and and they just stepped up like guys like me, Cecil and Orozco. There's not there was not in the team for the last two. Um, the guys just stepped up and. They, they prove that they, they're good enough to be there. So the I'm systems, the boys. We, we always hear about the systems, and I think Neil has just done something. He looked exhausted. <laughs> you guys broke him, man. You broke him with that build-up because it, it wasn't even a great start to the tournament. What did he say to you when you found out that Fiji had lost? Like, how do you keep that under uh, you know under control, knowing that they that you had that that opportunity? <laughs> yeah. So the the first time we coached Neil actually. Told the team that Fiji lost is actually after our semi final. Ah, okay I think. Then. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> or right before our semi final. I, I can't remember. But yeah, we weren't actually focusing on Fiji because going into the tournament, we knew already, listen, yeah, it's actually out of our hands. You know what I mean? Like, we can't control what Fiji is going to do if they're going to win or lose. So um, I remember I was, I was actually walking t to the warm up of our quarter final and I was walking past Fiji's changing room and they were just like down and out. And I thought to myself, these aren't like the faces of guys that just won a quarterfinal or a World Series. And I was just glancing back at Dylan Sage and I was like, what happened to Fiji? And I was like, no, they lost. And so I actually knew before we played quarterfinal. And I think once the boys also found out, you know, Fiji lost, it just kicked us into it again, knowing, hey, the ball's actually back in our court now. So, yeah, and I think uh, once that opportunity came, we weren't going to let it let go. Let it from go, no, for sure, man. And it's, I think the most impressive thing about not only the way that the, the gentleman culture within Sevens as a whole, but... I mean, there is a lot of love there. You can see that this is one of the close, most close-knit teams, uh, undoubtedly, in, in rugby. Yeah, definitely. I think, I don't know like how people see us from outside, but when we, we, when we win that huddle, it, it's just, just uh, like a brain of brothers. And Some we play for each other. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know what I would do without these boys, though. <laughs> Don't make me cry again, dude. Don't make <laughs> me cry again, man. Um, so, of course, a big part of the last weekend's um, kind of intensity was the Springboks also winning the most dramatic test against England. Score predictions for tomorrow, boys? I'm very positive. Um, you know, well, we were playing while they were playing, but we just heard like it was quite a performance they put up. So, um, I'm very excited to see them actually play tomorrow for the first time live. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm backing the box all the way. I'll say about yeah, 10, 10 to 12 points this time, I think. Uh, Ooh, we, nice. Yeah, I, like I think we, we're going to put up quite a show tomorrow. Um, I definitely, yeah, I think the, the momentum's there and certainly the spirit is there. Gentlemen, congratulations. It's been an absolute pleasure watching you play this season. You've had to do the hard yards. Um, it hasn't come easy, so you really have proven proven your worth. Thank you so much for joining us, Thanks, man. Man. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Just so awesome, man. So proud of these boys. Ruan Branco, part of a world championship winning seven side. Well, in the studio this morning, we have an Espresso favorite, multi-award nominated singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, designer. Oh, my goodness. The list goes on and on. Oh. Jimmy Nevis is in the house, everybody. Make some noise. <laughs> Come on. And, of course, we want to play a bit of a quick fire, rapid fire game with him just to get to know him a little bit uh, better. So how this works, Jimmy, is that I've got a series of questions for you. You have only 60 seconds to go through all of them. Basically, yeah. the first answer that goes through your mind is the one you should go with. Okay. Let's do all right. It. Just be confident. You got this. Put it there. 
Let's Can we go. get the time on the clock? Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Eat a jar of Nutella or peanut butter? Nutella. Summer or winter? Winter. Avengers or Justice League? Avengers. Ability to go back two days or ahead by 30 minutes? Uh, back. Okay. Ooh. Durban Beachfront or Kruger Nature Reserve weekend away? I think I'm going to say Durban. Okay, I'm yeah. feeling you infuse chocolate with orange or chocolate with chili? Chocolate. Ooh. <laughs> chocolate with chili. Yeah. Chocolate with chili. Yanni or Laurel? Oh, really? <laughs> Yanni. Yanni. Okay, banana yeah. on pizza, yes or no? No. Movies with subtitles or audiobooks? Movies, movies with subtitles. Okay, last album you bought? Uh, Kanye West. Kanye West. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Uh, favorite color? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say orange. Okay, Prince William or Prince Harry? Uh, Harry. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Definitely a night owl. What's your favorite word? Chaos. <laughs> John Travolta or Patrick Swayze? Um, this is Patrick Swayze because he's classic. I don't know. Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is Jimmy Nevis. Yeah. You managed to get through a whole 16 questions. Yeah, nobody well puts done. baby in the corner. So. No one ever puts yeah. baby in a corner. <laughs> Talking about baby in a corner, you yeah. have been in a little bit of a silent corner for a while. Mm. You were quiet. You were doing your thing. Yeah. Of course, working on this amazing album, Kai Mara, which is now out. What do you think you're hoping this album is going to be to the fans that have been following you and supporting you throughout this time? Um, I think exactly that, you know, an album. Yeah. Um, I think it's very far and in between that we get to fully listen to an album, mm -hmm. you know. I think over the past three years, we've been pushing singles and charting and, you know, I've been working on my foundation and clothing and, and all of these things. But to get back to the music and the yeah. detail of an album, a body of work is, is really what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's visually, it's, it's a whole year of unpacking. You know, I, I assembled this album so beautifully and unknowingly, you know, you never know how things are going to end up. Yeah. But unpacking it is a completely different journey. And it's something that I think is its own type of beauty and I look forward to performing that and unpacking it with everybody. Does it get easier or does it get harder? Because you've put out great music in the past and it just seems to be hit after hit after hit. Is there any pressure in coming up with this album and like wondering, will it be as good as the others? There's definitely that pressure, you know, but I think there's also a, a white noise that mm. comes with age, yeah. you know, I think just becoming more, confident within yourself, you kind of block out the unnecessary yeah. talk, you know? And for me, also being an independent artist now, um, producing a lot more on this album, uh, writing all of the songs, just getting to be a creative, not only as a vocalist, but in so many other ways as a music. Um, as my relationship with Ken. Yeah. Something that I, I'm letting people see. Yeah. You know, so in that way, it's exciting. And then, so for doesn't feel like there's that pressure, really, yeah. but in fact, and think that that is such a chimera, chimera, chimera. We're going to get into exactly yeah. the name, pay for yeah. the but you're not going anywhere. It's all morning. God blessed. He's here with us. It's Friday mm. and so much more music to come <laughs> on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Well, it is a big weekend ahead of Youth Day and Father's Day. And if you don't know what to get dad yet, don't worry. We've got you soon. We're bringing in the big guns. Nick Strelitz is here to help us pick your dad the perfect gift. I feel like I should have made a list yeah. for Father's Day, the way we're going on about this gift. It's amazing. And then uh, he mentioned that he said, nobody puts baby in a corner. Well, we are going to put you in a corner. Our musical corner, that is. He's going to be performing for us after the break. And Graham is going off oh, with his golden monkey, golden monkey on your Feel Good Breakfast show. <laughs> it's a fry. Yay. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Enjoy a moment in between the cafe. See you after break.